Blender 3.6 is finally here and this LCS release marks the end of the 3.0 series and the beginning of a new long-term support version for studios relying and using Blender 3.3 LTS. With most of the features we mentioned in the beta now available in the final release, here are a few things that you may have missed, some honorable mentions and a few set of new functions and features that made it to Blender 3.6 as this is more for quality of life and performance release than a new feature release. And for those who like to read upon the LTS release note, you can simply go for the link in the description that will bring you right here where you can check it out. And if you like to get the brand new version of Blender 3.6, the LTS, you can simply go over to blender.org and right here you can download Blender 3.6. And once you open up Blender 3.6, you'll notice that we have a beautiful splash screen. And for those who also want to get this splash screen, probably want to get demo file, you can also find the demo file right here with the link which I'm also going to put in the description. Now with Blender 3.6, there's a few UI and UX updates and improvements. One of the features that many persons have asked about is the Retopo overlay. And this is now available for cleanups and Retopo artists offering them a better chance to work easily. And like we mentioned in the beta release, tabs in the property window now shows the tooltip faster compared to previous versions of Blender. The asset browser now displays tooltips when assets have been hovered on and when you're working with nodes, be it geometry nodes or shader nodes, searching for nodes with slashes are now easier. The 3D text object now supports viewport selection by dragging across the text with a mouse and you can do more like selecting the entire text by double clicking. And in terms of making changes, you can now make changes to specific text within the font properties section with a more nicer feedback for styles. And for text, upper cases and lower cases are now supported for multiple languages. The open recent menu now supports 20 items, contrary to 10 from previous versions of Blender. The outliner now filters by grease pencil objects like we mentioned in the previous video. Pressing the escape key now cancels operations when dragging objects into your viewport. And for Mac OS, you can now preview recent Blender files which is now shown within the dock context menu. But that's not all for UI. The UI list now have a hover highlight feature, so once you're going through a list item within your properties or within the UI, this now indicates where your mouse is hovering on with a highlight. There's also a new menu for opening external files from the Blender file browser. And for those who are thinking about doing even more stuff with Blender, there is this pretty add-on made available by Blender Bob, which is not included with Blender 3.6, but this in itself is also a quality of life add-on, which is totally for free, which you can get. So the idea behind this is once you lock your camera, your camera stays locked all through. So even if you're switching from one camera to another, this is a pretty cool one and I'll suggest that you get it and add it to your list of tools to work with. And animation is also having some quality of life improvement. There is a new shortcut key for smoothing and blending which is Alt S and Alt D respectively. The scene duration can now be seen in the status bar which is great for animators, motion data cleanup artists and animation supervisors. And when you hold down control and click on in channel when working with a graph editor, this simply toggles selection rather than renaming it. And just like we have with the edit mode, users can smooth, shrink and grow selection in weight painting mode. There's also a Gaussian smoother operator which is pretty useful for animation artists and this is independent of key densities and cleanups. As this removes sudden spikes, this is definitely going to come in very handy for those who like to ease and clean up their keyframes. At the same time, there are cool improvements to inverse kinematics. There is a better and more comprehensive display of relations, as this allows you to preview joints which are linked together based off the head or tail with a simple toggle. More so, there is a new parent space transform which aligns child object and amateur bones to parent space. There is also updates to drivers for animation, the graph editor, the python api, the dope sheet and so much more. So if you're thinking about working with the animation tools that comes with Blender 3.6, of course this doesn't come with full set of features but they have a few quality of life improvements that might just help you get animating. And since Blender 3.6 is focused on performance, modeling is having some improvement as well. First off, the UV engine has been upgraded which has dramatically improved performance on large meshes and improving support for non-square materials. There is a new UV packing option which is called Pack to Original Bounding Box where the islands are packed into the original bounding box of the selection. There is also a new packing option for merging overlapped UV islands during UV packing. Furthermore, extracting UV map data for viewport drawing can be three times faster and there are new improvements like the UV sphere projection and UV cylinder projection as they now support manual placement of seams. And as part of improvement, subdivision has been slightly improved on loose meshes with no loss of vertices. Another interesting thing to see is when you're switching from edit mode to object mode, this simply happens a bit more faster compared to previous versions of Blender as there is a better calculation and also an improved performance with high resolution meshes. So we've all seen geometry nodes and all of the wonders that it has brought to Blender. 
And with Blender 3.6, Geometry Node is now shipping with Simulation Node. And this is the first official waves of Simulation Nodes coming to Blender, as the Simulation Node ships with Input and Output Nodes, which allows you to perform certain operations in between. And when combined with other nodes, this is definitely going to bring more to the table, as a good number of creators are already making some impressive tests and creations with this. And if you'd like to explore with the demo files that are currently available, then you can simply grab them with the link in the description and start playing with them. As the folks at Blender Foundation have made a few of these available, there's also some very interesting simulation and generator tools that I'm also going to link in the description, just in case you'd like to grab those too. In terms of rendering with cycles, loading large geometries into cycles is much faster, meaning rendering can start more quickly after geometry changes or switching to render view. At this point, you now have up to 60 times faster copying of mesh attributes, 10 times faster loading of cover objects, 9 times faster loading of point clouds, and 4 to 6 times loading of large meshes. So if you're thinking about getting that huge mesh from Sketchfab or any of the free resources that we've provided previously, of course you can bring these things directly into Blender and start rendering with cycles. The light tree feature which was introduced in Blender 3.5 is now faster thanks to the multi-threading and instancing support. And for hardware ray tracing, the support for hardware ray tracing acceleration has been added to AMD and Intel graphic card. Additionally, OpenShader language now supports for a new standard micro facet closure from Material X and there's an improved for now handling of glass BSDF. There's also an added support for light trees in AMD GPUs and there's a reduced memory usage of volumes in Apple Silicon GPUs. So, within the previous releases of Blender, we did see the Viewport Compositor show up and this had some very impressive tools that it came with. Of course, the nodes that we did see at the time were pretty small and it's quite impressive to see that with the new update of Blender 3.6, the Viewport Compositor now supports more nodes and makes it even way more useful to work with. And since we're talking about the Viewport Compositor and Eevee, the new transparent pass now contains alpha blended surfaces so they can be adjusted in the Compositor and later mixed with opaque passes. These passes only support monochromatic opacity and colored opacity will show differently than the combined pass, getting the Viewport Compositor a step closer to what we would definitely want to use it for when working in Blender. FBX now imports and exports faster. There's also a brand new add-on for 3DS import and export. Of course, we've mentioned that this is something that was coming over to 3.6 and it's pretty impressive to see that you can actually work with that right now. There's also a brand new C++ based PLY importer and exporter. And if you take a look at what you have with the previous version of the PLY importer and the exporter, you can see that there's a significant difference at how quick the importer actually works. And for USD, the curves and hair export is now available. There is also a new prime part export option. They've also fixed the texture pattern export and also fixed the duplicate shader nodes. These and more are now available for USD and as well for the input output section of Blender. So we did mention that the VDM brush maker was coming and it is quite interesting to see that this is now here. There is also the story pencil improvement tools that are now available working with Grease Pencil and creating storyboards. And in terms of assets, the human based meshes which existed within the demo section of the Blender.org website has now been updated and was made alongside the community in conjunction with the folks at Blender Studio. This asset pack now ships with four base meshes which includes male and female anatomy for both stylized and realistic use cases and as well some body parts. There's also a high and low resolution score and these are all CC0 and free to use for both commercial and personal projects. And since Blender 3.6 is more about performance and quality of life improvement, it is worth mentioning that object linking and unlinking is now faster. There's a 25% less memory usage in large geometries. There's also better performance when exiting a edit mode like we mentioned before. There's a 75% faster mesh conversion with multiple UV maps. Users can also get up to 80% improvement in memory usage of face corner split normal calculation. Extracting UV map data is about 3 times faster like we mentioned before and you can also get up to 44% performance improvement in meshes with custom split normal data. This alongside subdivision performance for large meshes just brings more performance to Blender 3.6.
So, this is it. For those who like to take a look at this, or probably you want to see an extensive version where we talked about some of these tools and actually demonstrated even more in our previous videos, then links to that is also going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. Blender 3.6, the LTS is now here and is available for studios and those who like to work and get long-term support for these to pick up and start working with. As we brace off for Blender 4.0, things can only get better from here. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.